All right. Good, good morning, everybody. It's so great being here, seeing how big b -Sides has become. Um, the reason for me wearing blue today, <laughs> as you heard, we are hiring. <laughs> um, do we have a clicker? Where is it? That one? Mm, gotcha. Nope. We nope. Connect it. Yeah, don't worry. That's all right. I can do my intro without it. Thank you. So, the today's talk is about better safe than sorry. And the reason for choosing that title is pretty simple. I'm in a CISO role and I'm talking to various people around the world and what all of them respond to me is that we do not talk enough about the problems and we do not talk about enough what we can do together, how we can collaborate, how we really could solve issues together as a team. So to me, information security means we need to bring people together. We really need to put our strangers together. We really need to think about how could we become a union. We are always talking about <laughs> things. Uh, we are always talking about what can our or what can we as an individual or what can our companies do to solve customer problems. But out of my perspective, it's way more important than talking about customer issues, we should way more talk about what can we do to solve the issues we all have as individuals. So as I really do not like to talk about myself, there's only one sentence I want to mention. I did nothing different than information security my entire career. And whilst I'm just running through different information security stories, really talking to people is what is key to me. And I'm traveling like to around 200 days per year to various countries and um, I'm in a good position really to talk to companies as well as people. I do talk to priests. I really do talk to a, a variety of people and um, it's really interesting that we all have the same problems. So information security is really a thing which does affect all of us and this is which brings us to the point that we really need to stop talking about IT security and start talking about information security. Who of you is wearing a smartwatch? Can you please raise your hand? Like one, two. Oh, that's very less. Who of you does have a smart speaker at home like Amazon Alexa or something? One, two. Wow. So the problem is, <laughs> um, I'm really happy with you having those things. But you as employees do bring those things into your companies. And that really does change the attack vector of companies. I'm always saying we can't win the information security battle anymore. The, what we can do is to create a proper roadmap to survive. And IoT really has become a big problem, a huge attack vector. So. IoT, out of my perspective, isn't IoT anymore. It has become vulnerabilities of things. The reason for calling it vulnerabilities of things is because everything which is smart is automatically vulnerable. And as I'm talking to so many companies, none of them really has a good IoT strategy. They're always trying to bring their systems into the cloud. They're always trying to get rid of their le legacy systems. They do always try to bring more and more new features into their business to make their employees happy, but they do not know what this really means to their information security landscape. And Internet of Things is a thing which is new, but in the same way we do have problems which are really all like hardware vulnerabilities. We all do talk about software vulnerabilities, patching things, making sure that our OS system is up to date, that the programs we do use are up to date. But by talking about information security from a more software perspective, we really do not think anymore about what's the attack vector from a more hardware perspective. And sometimes it's way more easier than finding a software vul vulnerability. It's way more easy, easier just to plug in a cable and use a microphone to whatever record what somebody is talking. So Internet of Things is also, or the problem behind Internet of Things is also supported by really good hardware from China or from wherever, which can be easily used to really do weird stuff. Have one of you ever heard of Bleeding Bit? Can you raise your hand? No, just one? Good one. <laughs> so, um, like four to 
five years ago, I was sitting together with German Telekom and we were talking about drone attacks. And I told them drone attacks will be an attack vector of the future. And I was also talking that to a couple of people and half of the people were laughing at me. They were like, no, drone attacks won't be an attack vector. Drone attacks won't be something which will really affect companies nor individuals. What we do experience today is a different story. And sure, we all know that we can use drones to attack them with a gun, to fight with them. But in the same way, we can put TNT under a drone and fly it into whatever facility to blow it up. This is really a bad scenario, but it shows how fast the entire thing has developed. You know, we can use a simple thing which is easy to use for each and every one of us and can do really bad things with it. But not only by putting TNT under a drone, we can also customize a drone with a smartphone. And we can use this smartphone and a very smart hacker, that's a friend of mine, he's living in Israel. We can use the smartphone which is equipped under the drone and connect it to a laptop. And then we can fly it up to the 27th floor. Basically that's the inside view. <laughs> and that's the view over Tel Aviv, which is really a nice city, so if you want to travel there, do it. It's really interesting. Um, but we can use the drone equipped with a smartphone to attack a network device. In this case, what they did, they attacked an Aruba IP, and it took them just three minutes to attack it, use a vulnerability, flash the system, and got access to the company's data. And by just thinking about what that means, information security, <laughs> or the threats behind information security has become very common. And easy, you know, it's just a drone which was like 400 bucks, a smartphone for another 50 bucks, some drag and drop stuff to put in, uh, to put an hack together and then they just used it. And by flashing that Aruba device, they were able to run man in the middle attacks and basically they were able to just collect, manipulate or whatever the entire company's data. Who of you knew his, him? Can you raise your hand? Mm. Only just one, two, three, four, five, six people. So this is an all AI news anchor. Even the model isn't real. The model is rendered by just a couple of CPUs. And this news anchor is telling you whatever you type in just by using a voice like Amazon Alexa voice. The story behind the news anchor isn't that I do not support those technologies. But what, what does it mean? It means that information security has also become a thing where we need to think about what does other people or nowadays AI is talking about us. And in the same way, we need to keep in mind that information security is reputation or information security means to secure your reputation because there's only one reputation. And now imagine someone is hacking the AI anchor and talking bad things about yourself, your family, or your company. <laughs> Another interesting story, I was attending Black Hat in December last year, and I took the photo on the left, and I used it to share it on my socials, and the sentence below the picture was, there is no security at Facebook anymore, not even at their booth. I tagged it with fake news and joke. <laughs> but what Facebook did was to block me entirely. So I got blacklisted. <laughs> I got blacklisted on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I got blacklisted on Facebook and Instagram. I wasn't able to share pictures anymore. I wasn't able to send out impressions. Even my photos weren't available throughout the entire network anymore. So if I just pushed out something new, you could go to my profile and see the picture there, but it wasn't seen somewhere else. So I opened the support case. <laughs> and imagine they never responded. <laughs> um, but what does it mean? 
again, information security has also become a topic where we need to think about do the things we want to share really reach our peers? Can we still reach our customers or is someone blocking us? Is there a whatever algorithm, algorithm which just filters out what we want, what we do talk about? Can we really make sure that those informations we want to share to the crowd of people or just to a smaller audience are really the one which we try to send over? And I mean, it's an interesting and funny thing, but to me as an individual, it took me over a month to again be able to share things. And just only because I knew a couple of people working for Facebook. Otherwise, I would be blocked entirely forever. And one thing which really hurts me is medical device hacking. I was attending a group of people last year and we tried to hack different medical devices. One of the medical devices we hacked was a pacemaker. And hacking a pacemaker means we were the one being able to adjust the heartbeat rate. We were able to just bring it down to zero or push it up to a thousand beats per minute. But in both ways, information security has become a matter of life and death. Because we were the one deciding whether someone still continued living or whether he dies. And medical device hacking really brought me to the point where I started thinking different about information security. Because sure, we are talking about software vulnerabilities. We are talking about hardware vulnerabilities. We are talking about interesting things like drone attacks or sharing a picture on Instagram or, or Facebook getting blocked there. But this really affects us as an individual. This really can make the difference to us. And this really, medical device hacking really is a thing where I do want you to stand up and where I want you to really talk about all the things which are going wrong. You know, because my experience is that within your mindset, there are so many things about information security. But if you don't share them, if you don't do not talk to your colleagues, to your family members, to your friends, you can't sh just change their opinion. The reason for me choosing my... Um, Instagram handle or my, 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 my Twitter handle, Society Hacker. The reason for that is exactly that one. We need to open or we need to change people's minds. We need to open their brains. We need to put the information security knowledge right inside their brains because otherwise they can get affected. And I don't want my family members to die just by someone playing God. And taking over the responsibility as well as knowing that we can't outsource our accountability really need to bring us to the point where we just force our companies to do the necessary things as well as where we need to make sure that we protect our families as well. Because it's our responsibility to ask for information security changes as computer security will be the security of the world. People often try to find out what we at Kencom, which is my company, or what I personally do different. And the thing I always respond is, you need to follow your own philosophy. And my philosophy is built on three different pillars, to coach, to transform, and to secure. And that means you need to coach yourself, you need to transform yourself, you need to secure yourself. But in the same way, you need to make sure that you coach your family, that you coach your company, and which is way more important than just coaching is transforming. Transforming means understanding different views and bringing different opinions together. And this is what really can make the difference in the information security business. Most of the more technical guys really look at information security from a technical perspective and they don't want to understand the more ops perspective or the more management perspective. And we always try to do information security as good as we can, but sometimes good is good enough. And out of my perspective, which is the second level of my philosophy, information security needs to be people-centric. And people-centric means that we really need to focus on the people. Let me give you some examples. Information security people-centric means that 
think about what can make the difference. And what we try to do is to share a free endpoint protection to each and every employee to just make them aware of what does information security means to you at home. Or people-centric, please think about Starbucks. What did Starbucks? Starbucks created an area between home and work, an area where you can just get yourself in touch with what's coming up or when you, where you can calm down or where you really can get in touch with whatever you need to do. They created a feel-good area between home and work, for instance. And out of my perspective, information security needs to be exactly the same. It needs to become a feel-good factor for each and every one. And as information security is there to protect your company assets, but in the first line, you need to protect the people, it needs to be people-centric. You need to talk to them. You need to understand them. You, you really need to figure out what do the people need. And as the world is our office that really has changed everything entirely, they want to work from everywhere, we need to support that. They want to work on every device, we need to support that. But in the same way, people want to look at information security as, as it would be baked in. So we really need to take over the lead in baking in security in each and everything we do. And this, out of my perspective, is... is the only picture which brings it to the point, we did information security from a more coconut style. We tried to, doesn't work, we tried to create a shell which was as hard as possible. And we tried to just make the wall bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and then that one day, cloud came up, IoT came up, and the wall isn't there anymore. So nowadays, we need to do it more avocado style. <laughs> we need to protect our crown jewels, and there needs to be a hard skin there as well, a hard shell. But in between those two shells, there needs to be a place for people where, where they can work as they want to work, where we can support the technical guys, but we also can make sure that the finance guys get the things they need. But in the same way, we still protect our crown jewels. And to be fair, crown jewels are the one we need to protect. We do not need to protect every single instance, every single server, every single, let's say, network component. If we do have a proper strategy, we do not need to, need to be the coconut anymore. And talking to people and thinking about new strategies and thinking about new ways of enrolling information security, we also need to talk about diversity and women in IT. As I mentioned, I'm traveling all over the world since a couple of years, and Germany, especially Germany, is way far behind other countries. We do, not, we do have two less women in IT, we do have two less diversity, but diversity and women is what makes inform what to me at least, is what makes the difference, you know? If we bring in new views, new perspectives, new ways of thinking, we can create new strategies, we can develop ourselves, we can really just bring information security to a point where it is people-centric as it is built by people instead of companies who try to sell you something. And therefore, we need to give information security a stage. And I'm really thankful that I'm allowed to talk to you today, but I want you to do exactly the same. I want you to go back home to your family members or go back to your companies, and I want you to be the InfoSec representative there. I want you really to talk to the people because that is the key. If we do not start talking about the things we do and if we do not explain what we do and how we do things and why, nothing will change. So what to take home with us because I'm really messing up the time. <laughs> um, there is still no patch for stupidity <laughs> and I can't provide you a patch for stupidity. But if we follow our own mantra, and if we, really, if we really set up an information security strategy, which is more avocado style than coconut style, I'm pretty sure we can make the difference. Because to me, no security means no privacy, and that in the end means no future. Thank you very much.
If you have some questions, I'm happy to take them from the floor. All right, thank you so I, much. I have a microphone for questions. You're sure? Nobody? No questions? Okay, if not, I have a question actually, though. Um, how do you convince your board of directors to invest in security? Um, <laughs> that's a good one. So, if people understand why to close the door at home, they will close the door at work. If people understand why to use a 16-digit password at home, they will use a 16-digit pass password at work. So, if we explain the why and take the people in the loop, they sure will take care of costs. But if information security has become a business value, no one will really be worried about the costs anymore because information security is a cost center and it will be a cost center in the future, that's for sure. But if we can create and deliver business value, and that's the key for the executive board, if we really create business value and deliver business value to the executive board, to the board of directors, to the lower management, upper management, and even to the, to the coworkers, that really will bring you in the position where money isn't the first question. They will respond to you. Thank you. Okay. How can we attract uh, women to InfoSec? <laughs> so um, let's come back to the social point of view. I don't want to say women do more social channel things as men, but if we start changing the way we do present ourselves, if we start making information security sexy, I'm pretty sure more and more women will join the business. The thing is, as we did information security in the past, <laughs> we really, I mean, it's the IT security and information security thing. If we can make information security sexy, and basically this is the reason for me being here, trying to make it a little more sexy with sharing all the informations about all these different topics, I'm pretty sure it will make the difference. You know, um, Other countries do the same, and they do have onboarding workshops. They have uh, women in security days within their companies. They try to be represented on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and all these social channels. If we do share what we do, I'm pretty sure women will get more and more interested into information security. But as we still have that boring information security fog being between us, and the women, I think the first thing we need to do is to enlighten them. And enlightening them means, at least to me, showing how interesting information security can be. I think what you're trying to say, to make it more attractive to everybody here. All right. <laughs> okay. um, that was talking, another one. Si since we were talking, I will go back to that. Since we were talking about women in IT, since many times we're a minority in the room, is there any woman in this room who has a question for Marcel? I would want to give priority to that. If not, I will go back. There was one question there. Was there any question here since I was on that side of the room? <laughs> then last. I'm uh, actually curious. So there is an ever-growing group of people that say that privacy is dead. And what do you say to those people? <laughs> I <laughs> a good one. Um, I do not think that data protection will be a big thing in the future. I do think the more bigger thing will be data management and data maintenance, because. The world we all want to have, or the future world we all want to have, means systems are connected, they do talk to each other, and they can't talk properly if there are different platforms, different languages, if we want to have safe self-driving cars, planes, and whatever, we need to bring it down to one language, one platform, one thing. And that automatically means that we need to combine information, we need to bring different views together and privacy 
I mean, it, it really can't work very well if privacy is the overall goal. I think privacy is important and we need to make sure that there is a difference between public and private, but it won't be the way GDPR is telling us. Thank you, Marcel. And that was the last question for our keynote speaker today. Thank you so much. Thank you.